Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, June the 12th, 2018. According to reports, Deontay Wilder has signed a contract to fight Anthony Joshua in the United Kingdom. Apparently, according to reports, he's getting more than $30 million for the fight. Let's talk about an early betting strategy looking at the lines for this fight. I'm expecting them to swing, right? But let's talk about an early betting strategy on this fight. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say this. Uh, just quick take on both fighters. I think Anthony Joshua is the better fighter inside. Right? I remember how he took out Dylan White. Joshua just seems to know how to go to the body better than Deontay Wilder. Right? The problem Joshua is going to face is the best punch either guy has in this fight is Wilder's straight right hand. Also, Wilder is un- orthodox. In other words, Joshua, who's tentative to begin with, is going to have a very hard time reading Wilder for the first few rounds of the fight. Put differently, Joshua isn't Mike Tyson, right? He's not the Lennox Lewis who took out Andrew Galata. Joshua just doesn't have it in him, in my opinion, one man's opinion, to come out and to try to jump on Deontay Wilder. Understand, too, Wilder, again, one man's opinion, isn't interested in winning by decision. Wilder's a guy who has given away the early rounds in fights like the Gerald Washington fight and the Luis Ortiz fight. I know some of these judges saw it differently. All I'm asking you to do is to look at those films yourself, right? Wilder, at least at the world-class level, has been extremely low volume early in fights. So I'm expecting, given the magnitude of this fight, I'm expecting both guys to spend some of the early rounds just looking at each other, right? I'm expecting a opening that isn't dramatic. Let me also point out too, I know Joshua's been working on his jab. That's a work in progress. When I talk about how tentative Joshua is, just look at how many right hands he threw against Joseph Parker. So I'm expecting the beginning to be slow. What I want you to do is to revisit Wilder against Ortiz. Count the number of punches that Wilder throws early in that fight. Just look at his level of inactivity. By the way, for the record, I actually believe that the Ortiz fight stylistically was a tougher fight for Wilder than this fight's going to be. Right? Ortiz is a southpaw. Here, he's fighting a tentative righty. Let me also say, too, I know Joshua dropped Vladimir Klitschko in the first half of their fight. But understand, Klitschko was clinical. In other words, if you were fighting Klitschko, Klitschko fights by the book. He's conventional. Joshua could look at Klitschko's style and could understand it. There is no sparring partner on the planet, in my opinion, who will be able to duplicate Deontay Wilder's style. So, what we want to do here is to set up a hedge. Let me also say, too, the casinos are run by very smart men and women. Right, So when you look at things like Anthony Joshua by KO, you're going to notice that the odds being offered are less than even money. If you look at Wilder simply to win the fight and you match it up with Anthony Joshua by KO, 
you're going to find that one set of odds right now at least on June the 12th, 2018, one set of odds offsets the other, right? I want to encourage people to go to oddschecker.com. They list the odds being offered by several casinos on this fight, and they offer different scenarios and round betting. <laughs> You're going to see that the casinos have set this up, where people are going to take Joshua by KO or take Wilder and not be able to hedge the play. So what we want to do here this is the risk-taking part of the internet. What we want to do is to set it up so we can take different scenarios and get better than even money odds on them. I view the fight as highly competitive. I don't think this fight has a clear-cut winner. Right? As Bill Russell famously said, the great ones are always different. I think Wilder's unorthodox style puzzles opponents. I think even when an opponent starts to figure it out, Wilder's right hand, the straight right hand, is an A-plus punch to the point where even guys with great chins like Luis Ortiz not only hit the canvas but look dazed and confused when they do. So I think Wilder here, with these odds, is being underestimated in a fight that really is a jump ball, at least from this seat. So, let's talk about some plays we like. I'm going to propose here, and it's early, right? The odds are going to swing, and when they do, you need to swing with the odds. You need to readjust. This is just for the early betters, this video. <laughs> and again, <coughs> it's June the 12th. They haven't even set up a date for this fight. The fight might not take place until the fall. But the first bet I believe you need to take right now, and it's going off at Skybet. Right now, according to OddsChecker.com, is Deontay Wilder simply to win the fight at 15 to 8. Right? 15 to 8. Next, what I want you to consider, right? And again, this is just for your consideration. You make up your own mind. Is Anthony Joshua by KO not for all 12 rounds? Because the casino has drained the odds of profits, in my opinion. But Anthony Joshua by KO in rounds 7 to 12. Right now at Betfair and at Patty Power, you're getting that at 13 to 5. You're getting Anthony Joshua by KO in round 7 to 12 at better than 2 to 1 odds. Finally, the last bet. Right? Whether this fight goes the distance. Now, I'll be blunt here. I don't see the fight going the distance. This last part is really a hedge. Right? Whether the fight goes the distance is actually going off right now at Betfair and Paddy Power at 3 to 1. In other words, the casinos don't believe the fight goes a distance. But if it does, and let's remember, Joshua Joseph Parker goes the distance. Let's remember, Wilder Bermain Stavern 1 goes the distance. If this one goes the distance, you're getting 3 to 1 odds. Now my point to you is if you structure this correctly, you can take all three of these props. You can have a hedge that extends through three bets. Let's do the math. Let's have a hypothetical $5. We're going to bet on Wilder by KO and Joshua, excuse me, Wilder simply to win. Right? You're getting great odds on Wilder simply to win. I like that play. 
five bucks on Wilder simply to win. Five bucks on Joshua by KO in round seven to twelve. And four bucks on the fight going the distance. Let's do the math. Understand if Joshua, excuse me, if Wilder wins the fight, right? Five bucks on Joshua getting 15 to 8 would net you 9.375 in profit. Right? Now, AJ to win by KO in round 7 to 12. Five bucks on that. At 13 to 5, nets you 13 bucks. Right? Understand, with those two options, if you win either side of them, you make money. Right? Just do the math. Now, if we were to include a failsafe, four bucks at three to one, right now at Betfair and Patty Power on this fight going the distance, right? If you bet four, you would win 12. Now, understand, if the fight goes the distance and Deontay Wilder wins the fight by decision, Understand, these guys are KO. <coughs> <coughs> Nursing a cold here. These guys are KO punchers. Right? Joshua was on the canvas against Vladimir Klitschko. If Wilder starts slow but then is able to knock Joshua down a couple times, Joshua gets up against Vladimir Klitschko, is able to continue on in the fight. Right? If Deontay Wilder knocks down Joshua a couple of times, if those are the only knockdowns in the fight, he could well win by decision. Right? Understand, I know the judges in the UK love Anthony Joshua. No question about it. But you're talking about power punchers here. You're talking about a situation where even the scoring might be taken away from the judges. Think Manny Pacquiao against Chris Algieri. Right? Both of these guys hit hard. Think Joshua Clotty against Anthony Mundine. I could easily see Joshua getting hit. He goes down. It's the end of the round. He's able to recoup. He gets hit. He goes down. He recoups. And then pride kicks in. And he says, look, Maybe I've lost my title, but I'm going to go the distance in this fight. If it goes the distance under those circumstances, understand, if Wilder wins by decision, you win two-thirds of the hedge. You win Wilder simply to win. Right? And again, you're getting 15 to 8, better than even money odds on that. And of course, you'd get the 3 to 1 on the fight going the distance. Right? Understand, if the fight goes the distance, right, you win 12 bucks, four times three, right? Making a profit on the five and five that you've bet on Wilder and Joshua. Even if it's Joshua who wins a decision. Do the math. You clear two bucks on the outlay. Now my point to you is simply, unless you believe, <coughs> and I understand some of you do, that Joshua is going to be able to just come in, jump inside, and destroy Deontay Wilder in the first six rounds of the fight. With this betting scenario, you're covered the minute the fight makes it to the seventh round. In other words, you're there eating your popcorn or whatever, 
as long as it's not Joshua winning in the first six rounds, you're covered. Right? Let me just say this. You do suffer a very mild loss if Wilder wins the fight by stoppage. Right? Just think it through. Because you would, well, put it this way. It's not a mild loss. It's a very mild win. <clears throat> Five bucks gets you $9.38. If you bet on Deontay Wilder to win, you would lose nine bucks. You wouldn't win on the AJ by Kale in the second half of the fight. And you wouldn't win on the $4 that the fight goes the distance. But understand, even on the Wilder by stoppage, you're breaking even. In fact, you're getting a profit. This is the direction I like right now based on these odds. But understand it's early. The information is going to change. We're going to hear stories about how these guys are doing in sparring. We're going to hear stories about whether or not these guys are healthy, right? Any opponent they've had in the background is going to come out of the woodwork. Any sparring partner they've had are going to come out of the woodwork. I know Gerald Miller is critical of Deontay Wilder. I know the rumor is, well, hell, it's been confirmed that David Price put down Anthony Joshua in sparring. But if you're going to beat the casino on this one, you need to be more imaginative, in my opinion, than in using Joshua by KO as a hedge at less than even money odds. Anyway, this is how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. We might have a disagreement on the pacing of the fight. I'm expecting a start akin to Deontay Wilder, Gerald Washington. Count the punches Wilder throws in the early rounds of that fight. Very few. Wilder against Luis Ortiz. Again, count the punches Wilder throws in the early rounds of that fight. Right? If you want to revisit round one of Joshua against Dylan White, Dylan White's pushing the issue in that round. Right? What happens when an opponent doesn't push the issue against Anthony Joshua? Can Anthony Joshua get the car out of first and second gear in the first two rounds? I question that. Even the way Joshua got the title, he's throwing counters. He's not leading. The other guy is throwing punches that Joshua then counters with straight right hands. Right? I believe Deontay Wilder, who has profound ring coverage, he can take you out from halfway across the ring. Look at the Wilder Audley Harrison fight. Right? I believe with Wilder, there's always that threat of a straight right hand. I also feel that Wilder these days is savvy enough to know that he doesn't have to throw a lot of punches early because he doesn't want to give his opponent opportunities to counter. And at the end of the day, Anthony Joshua is a jabbing counterpuncher. Right? Let's talk about that jab, too. Understand, Joshua is just developing that jab. Hasn't had a lot of pro fights. Count the number of pro fights the two men have had. Wilder's had vastly more. When you look at Joshua's jab, <coughs> let's just say he won't be able to come find Wilder with that jab. Right? Wilder's tall like him. He's lanky. Look at Joseph Parker's face after his fight against Anthony Joshua. Twelve rounds of action. Joseph Parker's not banged up. Joshua's jab at this point is really a placeholder. It's not a Larry Holmes jab. 
right? So I'm expecting Joshua to come out tentatively because that's who he is. This is not Mike Tyson, right? This is not Jack Dempsey. I'm expecting Joshua to come out tentative behind the jab. I'm expecting Wilder to walk away from the jab. I'm expecting there to be a lot of caution by both fighters, especially Joshua, because of Wilder's ability to hit you hard from long range. Right? Think about Wilder against Arthur Spielka. Folks, that fight made it into the second half of the fight. And Spielka, to me, is a little bit more of a daredevil than Anthony Joshua in terms of taking chances in the ring. I don't think either guy takes a lot of chances. I think Joshua privately believes that if he just flicks enough jabs and stays upright, he'll get a decision, like he did against Joseph Parker. So he's not going to panic. If three rounds go by and he's up three rounds on the judges' scorecards, there isn't going to be that urgency to cut off the ring and end the fight. Again, that's not who he is. With Wilder, <coughs> there hasn't been any urgency for several fights. Right? The Luis Ortiz fight makes it into the second half of the fight, doesn't it? Right, Even when Wilder is fighting an older opponent, he doesn't try to get too physical too early. Right Now, we're talking about Wilder at the championship level. I don't want to hear about Wilder early in his career when he's knocking everyone out inside of four rounds. Right? This is a bit of a different Wilder, isn't it? So again, I'm expecting a slow opening. Right? If Wilder makes it a fast opening and wins the fight, I'm not going to complain since part of the hedge is Wilder to win at 15 to 8. And by the way, you need to shop for that 15 to 8 because some of the places... William Hill, for example, have Wilder at 13 to 8. The 15 to 8, the gap between the 15 to 8 to the 13 to 8 is what allows you to make a profit if Wilder wins the fight. Right? You want to shop for the 15 to 8. It's available right now at Skybet. As I said before, if you set up this hedge, the minute the fight makes it to the seventh round, you're okay, you're hedged, even if the fight goes the distance. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let's hear your betting strategy. I'm sure some of you are going to say, Anthony Joshua is not competitive. I'm just taking Deontay Wilder by knockout, right? I'm sure many other of you are going to say, Joshua is the favorite for a reason. Wilder's beating up on the Audley Harrisons of the world. Luis Ortiz is an old man. Our guy is beating Vladimir Klitschko. He just beat an unbeaten Joseph Parker. Why do I need a hedge, right? No one needs a hedge until the roof caves in. Just like no one needs car insurance until they're in that car crash. Right? Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. We all understand. We're all adults here. We all understand that it's early and that the odds might change and the information might change as well. Thanks for stopping by.